It's early June here, 2017, at our Edible Acres 2 property, and the gardening season's really getting off to a great start. I thought it'd be nice to document just kind of a walking tour, show some highlights of what's been working, what sort of issues we have, and take a quick shot of what what all's happening in the garden right now. We'll go in there in a moment. I uh, wanted to look in the greenhouse first. It's a transition time. We just finished moving all of our transplants and starts, most of our transplants and starts off from the left side. This was just packed with seedlings and starts. We're getting ready today at some point. Sasha will come out and plant that side out to our hot peppers and maybe some other herbs like basils and etc. We'll finish harvesting and enjoying the greens and transplants from this side and plant that out to tomatoes and trellis those. This has been working really nicely. And out in the garden itself, got all sorts of things starting to happen. The sea kale is in the peak flower, really strong honey scented flowers. It's all sorts of new varieties of mints, some rue going on. This right now is a cuttings bed, so there's uh, red and black currants, there's some grapes in there, goji berries rooting, just kind of taking advantage of this new space early on. I've got some chestnut seedlings growing out of pots as a trial this year, just to understand more about being a nursery that's portable. I want to be able to share that sentiment with people that don't have permanent spaces yet. And then the garden itself, let me come through and take a look. Just way too much to be able to show everything, but I just figured it would be nice to see some really nice varieties of lettuce that we're going to save some seed from. This is just such a beauty. Growing really nicely. The profusion sorrel looking great as an edge plant with Doc pretending it's a sorrel. I'm a sorrel? Uh, well, close enough, we'll leave you for now. Our artichokes are starting to finally take off in our cool north-facing slope. Artichoke seems like a questionable thing, but really worth trying. The lupins are popping. Walking onions are getting ready to make their top sets. We've been cooking with those quite a bit. This year it's been a nice hybrid between uh, production beds for our food crops, a mix of um, you know, straightforward annual food crops and brassica type stuff with ornamental, which is ornamental garlics on the edges. There's flowers on the margins. And then also the nursery needs being met as well. So there's a whole bunch of anise hyssop in the middle, which will be on the website for sale in the fall. So kind of the delineation between nursery propagation space, our food crops, and ornamental and beauty in the garden is super blurred this year, which feels very nice. Now this bed is more about nursery propagation with anise hyssop and then these are ranch elders. But then there's borages and there's some other things popping in here. Some tot soys on the edges. A little walking onion going. And then there's the beds that we're allowing to just be a little more on the feral side. So again, some production of <laughs> anise hyssop, but then overwintered parsleys, some intentional tot soys planted in where there are gaps, and very exciting are these three root grex beets, which are starting to naturalize in the garden here. They look a little beat up. It's been so rainy lately, I think the slugs are hurting them, but these beets are just coming in on their own at this point. They're a weed in this bed, which is very exciting. And then a bed that feels a little bit more like production. Dill, cabbages, and onions. And then a more wild space again. That's where all the little ponds are. It seems like the wildlife that enjoy the ponds really enjoy a more wild space. Let's look at another area. You can see the bird bopping around on the cattail stem right there. And we just saw a frog jump into the water. We've got some different aquatic vegetables we're trialing this year and really enjoying the benefit of doing propagation work of wet loving plants on the edges of this pond 
boy, oh boy, are they just thriving with it. There's all varieties of currants and elder, which love wet to begin with. And then Sasha's got her different flowers and things and some annual crops growing in there. And this year we've set out a bunch of traps for voles, but uh, the vole pressure that we had last year, which was massive, has gone down quite a bit. And I would really think the main reason is the amount of snakes that we're seeing, which is awesome. Keep coming across snakes in the garden. And then there's this beast. This is a Scotia elder, elderberry. It's about eight feet tall and rising, loaded with small flowers. It's gonna be a huge fruit crop this year. Very excited in the fall to be able to offer hardwood cuttings through the website of different varieties of elder. And just to the east of that, we've got an apple tree that's very excited about me taking some aggressive cuttings from the elder. Can barely get up into the canopy. And then again, this fun hybrid of the line being blurred between what's propagation and what's our food crop. So there's some onions, there are beets growing, but then there's also perennial so this would be an actual little mini orchard installation. These are black comb, black currants that are planted to be permanently here with primus white currants through the center of the bed. And then there's American persimmon seeds cast out to grow out into trees. And then OP367 hybrid poplars. And then back to our crops again. These some tatsoys that bolted. But it's kind of, it feels very sweet, I think, to not have a clear delineation between nursery production and home food production and ornamental. So perennial leeks, nanking cherries, hardwood cuttings of grapes, and then salad for dinner. More beds that are providing tons of nectar for bees and flying what-have-yous. Sage and chives next to each other. What a beautiful combo. And I'm just thrilled with the foliage. I'm pulling a blank for a moment. Is this Primus or Blanca? I'd have to look at my notes, but it's a white currant, and I've never seen such a showy stem on a currant. It's really cool. We've got the fence line all planted out to tomatoes every foot or two. Those will get trellised and trained. And this year we've pushed our property, well, pushed right out to the property line on the outside. <clears throat> we'll be applying compost and growing winter squash on trellises out there. And the kohlrabi are moving along. They're in the center of the bed. And okra is just getting started if the robins stop kicking the soil apart. The okra should be getting started in these nice lumps with peppers to the south of them. And the okra will grow and cast shade so the kohlrabi, once we get into the real heat of the summer, should have some protection. Beautiful stand of favas. Sasha planted these quite a ways back. I feel like it was early April and still got a bunch of frost and things on them. They're just getting ready to start making a, a nice crop in there. Fava will segue to a midsummer or a fall crop once we start, or once we finish getting our crops. We're not going to just turn this under. Sasha will harvest every last bean for us to eat, but then all the greens will get um, gently chopped and decayed back into the soil. On the edge of the bed is profusion sorrel, and perennial arugula, and then all throughout is agretti, which I talked about last year and has since started to naturalize. It almost looks like um, horsetail, it, and it's very weedy, but it, this is one of our favorite greens, and it's wonderful that it's filling in. It's pretty much a solid ground cover now. So this whole bed packed to the gills with lots and lots of plants, asparagus popping up through the top. We're letting that make its ferns now. And soil fertility is starting to really show itself.
a cut and come again block of salad, medicinal herbs in the form of hyssop, some cilantro to add a lot of flavor to different dishes, and then hardwood cutting propagation stool bed of white currants. Why separate them? Oh yeah, and Turkish rocket. Really nice aromatic flower. We're going to let that make its seed. Collect the seed and cut them all so they can start again. Slugs, maybe we can just have one strawberry this year that you didn't make a hole throughout. Ooh, this might be the one. Yeah, a little young, but if I wait a day... Oh man! <laughs> That's still good. A little rinse won't hurt. So much more to share, but we'll leave it there for now. It's in the early morning when we get to hear the birds more than the road. Well, I guess you get to hear me more than the birds, sorry. We'll look at this garden over and over again throughout the summer. It's a pretty cool space. Right now it's just starting to really get into the swing of things.